If you were Starship, standing on the OLM at the launch site, how would you feel? Well, perhaps a touch of envy towards the birds flying nearby. Envy for what? Those birds can fly whenever they please, whereas Starship can't take flight due to the constraints imposed by government agencies. September, definitely not. October, perhaps not. Never before has it been so difficult to predict a Starship time. Amidst such rumors regarding Starship's launch date, SpaceX has recently unveiled a new launch license from the FCC, providing us with some insight into potential time frame for Starship's upcoming rocket activities. So let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX is currently awaiting approval from the Fish and Wildlife Services for its launch pad to conduct the next Starship orbital flight. In preparation for this test, SpaceX has submitted an application to the FCC to gain permission for communication with the Starship during the test. The filing indicates that the Starship test campaign is scheduled to commence in January. It's worth noting that such filings are a routine part of SpaceX's operation as it continues to develop the world's largest rocket at its facility in Boca Chica, Texas. The recent FCC filing, approved by the FCC, pertains to a six-month period starting from January 27, 2024. However, in contrast to an earlier flight made earlier this year, which was also related to the second Starship test flight, the recent filing has a more limited scope. The earlier filing, which became known in May, just less than a month after the Starship orbital test flight, covered various aspects including the first stage booster at the launch pad, the complete Starship vehicle, and the second stage. In contrast, the most recent filing focuses solely on obtaining FCC authorization for communication with the Starship booster and the launch site. Depending on whether SpaceX has submitted the additional applications to the FCC, this could imply two possibilities. It suggests that SpaceX is either planning Starship tests that are not orbital in nature, or it may have submitted separate requests to the FCC to seek clearance for the entire Starship vehicle and its orbital flight. What's noteworthy is that January 2024 marks exactly 135 days from now, which is the evaluation period by the Environmental Agency for the Starship program. If delays extend to this time frame, it would be quite problematic, resulting in an official nine-month postponement from the initial launch. Government officials would be wise to consider building a larger rocket garden for Starship. However, to be candid, we shouldn't overly rely on the FCC's time frame. This is primarily because it serves as routine paperwork for SpaceX, with its time frames merely serving as extensions for Starship's activities in the following year. Furthermore, even with the FCC permit, it explicitly stated Launch Licensing Authority is FAA Office of Commercial Space Transportation. Therefore, regardless of the circumstances, the definitive timing for Starship should rely on notifications from the FAA. While awaiting the latest updates on the launch permit, SpaceX continues to maintain a brisk pace of activities surrounding their next planned orbital test flight of the Starship rocket. As evident, SpaceX is quite busy conducting tests and manufacturing new rockets at their facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. Street rumors suggest that the company is upgrading the abort system for the booster, which will be utilized in the second test flight. Additionally, recent tests in Boca Chica indicate that the company recently intentionally caused a tank to burst, likely to test its structural limits as part of Starship's development program. Such tests are common in rocket development, providing engineers with crucial data on the structural integrity of the equipment and potential failure points. SpaceX's approach to rocket development differs from traditional aerospace and NASA. While the latter two entities slowly manufacture a vehicle over many years, SpaceX rapidly constructs equipment, tests it for failure, and then implements the necessary upgrades. Therefore, the company is actively producing Starship test articles with recent upgrades, even as they await the second orbital test flight. Recent upgrades to the Starship rocket include a new engine gimbal system, upgrades to the engine valves and ceiling rings, modifications to the abort or termination system, and an improved fire suppression system designed to eliminate or minimize fires inside the rocket's engine compartment. Most of these systems were responsible for the multiple failures in the April test that saw the world's largest rocket lose several of its engines during flight and then somersault in the air as it waited for the flight termination system to activate. Furthermore, SpaceX also didn't forget to increase the speed of production and testing of the new Starship prototypes. Following its successful cryogenic proof testing at the Massey site, Booster 10 embarked on the next phase of its journey, returning to the production site within SpaceX's bustling Starbase facility. This move signaled a pivotal moment in the booster's development as it transitioned from the testing phase to the assembly and refinement stage. At the production site, Booster 10 underwent a series of transformations, fueling speculation about the nature of the work being carried out. One notable development was the booster's placement in the Mega Bay, a strategic location within the facility. This relocation hinted at a flurry of activity poised to unfold, with enthusiasts and experts alike eagerly anticipating the next steps. 
While the specifics of the work remained veiled due to the limited visibility within the mega bay, several educated guesses emerged. Prominent among these were discussions regarding the potential installation of engines on Booster 10. The placement of the booster on a stand that aligns with engine installation points fueled these speculations, raising the prospect of the booster taking its final form as it prepares for static test firing. Ship 29 has been a focal point of preparation and progress. This vessel underwent rigorous cryogenic proof testing, a critical step in assessing its ability to withstand the harsh conditions of space. Meanwhile, Ship 28 hasn't been idle either. Observers have noted intriguing modifications to its nose cone section, where a set of covers was installed over the header tank vents. The process of stacking rocket parts has been improved by SpaceX faster than ever. Booster 13's led the way in these developments, showcasing remarkable swiftness in its stacking process. With only two pieces left to integrate, it's on the verge of completing its liquid oxygen tank, demonstrating the efficiency and precision in SpaceX's assembly process. This acceleration and stacking signifies a refined and streamlined approach to production, as Starbase continues to roll out impressive rates of rocket assembly. Simultaneously, within the high bay, the saga of Ship 31 is drawing closer to its climax. Positioned on the precipice of completion, Ship 31 awaits only the final addition of its engine section before it stands as a fully realized spacecraft. This achievement not only underscores the proficiency of SpaceX's high bay operations, but also the promise of an extensive fleet of spacecraft poised for upcoming missions. Lastly, at the launch site, updates on both Ship 25 and Booster 9 have generated interest and speculation. Ship 26 has been hooked up to Crane Marvin via the squid yet again and still hasn't had a sniff of cryo-loading or engine tests. Concurrently, Booster 9 continues to undergo extensive work, even after being declared ready by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. Hot staging has been reinstalled on Booster 9 after SpaceX engineers removed it from the booster last week. While the exact reason is still uncertain, many believe this decision may be related to issues or necessary modifications on the booster. SpaceX personnel have been observed working alongside welding equipment on the top of the forward dome of Booster 9 after the ring was removed, suggesting either internal modifications or the potential for a permanent attachment. The absence of the rings at both the build and launch sites has raised suspicions of replacements or static fire incidents with the ring under another starship. As SpaceX continues to work on various prototypes and expand its operations, the removal of the hot staging ring remains an intriguing development. In general, the efforts and endeavors at SpaceX's Starbase are undeniable. Even when the Starship's ready, they don't become complacent with this achievement. Instead, they continue to test and experiment to ensure a firm grasp on the anticipated success, which will undoubtedly be a significant milestone in the space community. Finally, the paperwork required for this launch will be a small hurdle for SpaceX, but they certainly won't slow down. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.